Our next speaker uh, I want to introduce you is James Flynn. And James is the University Relations Manager with IBM. And I think it's particularly timely that we invite somebody from the private sector, from the business end, from a, uh, a company, I think, that probably has a different way of looking at things than we ourselves do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, the, the models that operate in the private sector are different to the models that operate in the public sector. And in a way, we need to open our minds all the time to different ways of doing things. So it's interesting that somebody from that perspective is here to, to talk to us today. Uh, we need to make sure that we don't let ourselves get cocooned and isolated into certain ways of doing things, and we must look at different ways of doing things all the time and take ideas from everyone and everywhere. In particular, James is going to talk to us about the whole area of IT. And this operates at such uh, a number of different levels. We obviously have the IT for our learners, the IT for our staff, uh, we have infrastructural issues, but most importantly, I think all our learners are going to be struggling and involved in uh, an IT world. And for many of our courses, the objective of those courses is to have our learners work in the IT industry. So it's important that what was, I think, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, IT was maybe an isolated sector in particular companies or in particular areas or in particular businesses. Now IT is pervasive. It's everywhere. It's part of your education. It's part of your knowledge. And it's something we have to provide for. So to get a perspective from IBM, uh, I'd invite James Flynn to speak to you. Thank you, Evan. So my name is James Flynn. I work in university programs with IBM. So basically, uh, it, it, what, I, what I do is I work on partnership arrangements between IBM's various businesses in Ireland and, and the third level sector. Um, and think things that would include things like curriculum development, research programs, and, and, and so on. But the important thing is that it's of mutual benefit to, to both sides. So we always have to try to prioritize and to make sure that, you know, that, there's, that, that, that what, whatever we're doing was, is benefiting uh, both sides. So um, thanks for the invitation to, to speak today. And as, as I was saying to Evan beforehand, um, you know, I suppose 10 or 15, 20 years ago, IT was very much a, a separate area, specifically, uh, yeah, I suppose, a specific department within companies, and mainly uh, people who worked in IT depended to, uh, tended to work in IT companies. That's so, so different. So, for instance, if we're involved in a recruitment fair, we can be sitting, standing next to uh, people from Paddy Power who are interested in, in uh, recruiting high-level graduates in, in business analytics, the same as ourselves. So, you know, a, a bookmaker's company and an IT company competing for graduates side by side. So that's, you know, that's, that's the trend. And what I want to talk about today are, are you know, trends in, in, in um, uh, IT, uh, ICT uh, positions, that's information and communication technologies, and what um, that means for the marketplace in terms of uh, ICT and also the implications for skills required um, and also for, tr for education and training. Uh, I don't want to get too much into, you know, uh, technical terms and, and facts and figures, so I'm just trying to give a sort of just an idea of the trends that are taking place so I wouldn't get too concerned about all the, the, the detail of it, just trying to get, get across some of the trends which would prompt uh, discussion um, for, for you in, in 15 minutes or so. Um, so, um, I suppose the, the the main trends that are really having a huge impact for, for uh, industry and uh, across all, all industries are um, listed there, which I'm sure you're, you're all aware of, um, mobile computing, cloud computing, social computing, and what's now referred to as the, uh, the internet of things, the, the connection between uh, mobile devices. Um, so very briefly then on, on each of those areas, cloud computing, which I think would certainly have an impact on people who are running um, 
IT systems now in, in, in your colleges and so on. It's just a different, a new way of delivering IT services and um, uh, software and services. And one of the big impacts here is that it allows very small companies, for instance, to, to have access now to very um, sophisticated uh, um, uh, you know, hardware at, at a very uh, relatively low cost and, and done in a, in a certain way, in such a way that uh, it's easy, easy to manage. Uh, there's a rapid penetration of mobile devices, we all see that. Um, particularly relevant uh, in terms of these trends would be the mobile apps and uh, the connections between mobile devices. And all, this, um, uh, uh, all these, these trends are generating huge amounts of data. So uh, what to do with that data and how to manage it. Um, and also allied with that is the trend of social technologies where uh, um, these, uh, these technologies are migrating from personal use to business use. And that has an impact on the way businesses and organizations are, are run. And all these trends are happening so quickly and in a relatively short period of time. Um, so uh, companies like myself, or the company I work for, IBM, was be obviously very involved in the early days where there was you know, big machines, the computing age, and so on. And then in the 90s, we moved to the internet age. But now we're into the whole area of you know, what's referred to as the smarter planet and, and all, all this data that, that's been generated and, and how you can um, ap apply that. So, for instance, uh, the, the Forfoss report, if I can quote from, from that report, was just out a few weeks ago. Was, um, it says that while these trends will require, um, you know, core skills, and certainly for ourselves, the main skill that we would still require, uh, it, you know, into the future would be your, your main computer science degree course. But along with that, some of these uh, trends in, ba in, in, in big data and social media and so on are requiring um, a, new, a mix of skills, which includes things like business, technology, even marketing, and, and, uh, and so on, which is, which is allied to computer science, which means that, um, you know, the education or the, uh, you know, will have, there'll be an impact on education and training in that, um, these requirements are much more, more complex, and it's not as easy to categorize uh, skills in computer science as it would be, for instance, in finance, accounting, engineering. It's very, uh, it's very clear what, what you need to get a qualification in, in accounting or law or, 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 or medicine and so on. But, um, so this has an impact, obviously, in education in terms of the, the broad range of skills that, that are required. Another way of looking at it is this uh, idea of systems, where you have programming systems. Now we're moving to cognitive system, uh, systems, where you have a proliferation of, of, of ICT that's used in business and, uh, and personal use, but also a huge increase in the number of mobile devices. Uh, and the idea is to try to um, design these devices in such a way that they can be used to uh, enable intelligence for applications like um, green tech and, and e-health and so on. So to give you a concrete example of that, the, the top right there, the in infant uh, center, that's a center for perinatal care in, in University College Cork, or Cork University Hospital. So what they're doing there is they're, they have um, a ver very uh, advanced uh, re research center. They have, uh, they're monitoring um, uh, uh, you know, the health of, of, of babies that uh, are, are in difficulty and uh, but the problem is that there's so much information coming in, it's how to manage this. So uh, we're working now with um, Cork University Hospital in, in designing um, a system where all this information can be brought together uh, in one platform and analyzed, and also that it can be shown uh, visually to the user, to the, to the medical experts, to allow them to make decisions, because they only have, in certain cases, if a problem arises, uh, minutes to make a decision. So all this information is, is coming and they don't really have the time to assess that. So if you can have that uh, uh, analyzed and present it in a way that's easy, easy to see in a graph and so on, this is the kind of, of level of skills now that are, are required. Uh, so you're looking at not just the, the, the computer science part of it, but how it's, how it's to be used uh, and you know, with the, the user in mind and, and, and so on. And it, it involves uh, a lot of collaboration between, obviously, medical experts uh, and, and, and computer science experts. And then there's other applications which involves people with, you know, uh, experience in, in business and so on, depending on what the application is. Um, 
So all of this, uh, across all of these trends, is the need for IT security. So this is taken from the Irish Times of about two weeks ago, where this, um, there was a, a, an online attack on a, certain, uh, a company where banking and personal details of uh, possibly up to one and a half million people uh, was, was accessed. Uh, so this involves now a, a complex uh, you know, criminal I I investigation. So people obviously in law enforcement need to be on, on top of this as well. So it, you know, it, it really is pervasive and it affects you know, um, it, you know, industry, business, and, and uh, all organizations. So uh, a lot of figures here. This is from the Forfoss uh, report, uh, uh, which came out a few weeks ago. So I just want to you know, mention one or two figures there. Um, the number of people working in I ICT is about six, just over uh, 68,000, and that's, that's um, planned to increase by about 5% a year for the next five or six years, up to uh, 91,000. But uh, when you take into account people leaving the industry, a replacement demand and so on, that's going to create about 44,500 positions up to the year 2018. So. Um, Huge growth, obviously, uh, in, in terms of demand for, for graduates and people with, with um, ICT qualifications. Um, but the demand for Europe, if, if anything, in the EU is, is you know, just as high. Uh, depending on the, the level of economic growth, a cautious estimate would be that by the year 2015, two years away, there's going to be a demand for 372,000. And if you take a more optimistic view on, on growth in, in the EU, that, that number will increase to 864,000. So um, where people will talk about, um, you know, wh wh why are there so many, you know, jobs and uh, being announced and so on if it's so difficult to get people, but this, this is a problem that's worldwide. So for instance, uh, the one asked somebody um, said at a, at a meeting recently that there are more vacancies in Germany in ICT than there are ICT positions in Ireland. So if you take all the IC people working in ICT in, in Ireland, that's how many job vacancies there are at the moment in Germany. So it, it's, it's a massive area and it's, it's um, in terms of, of, of um, opportunities for graduates. And I suppose the challenge is, try to, is really to see how you can uh, match people's uh, abilities and tech, technical acumen to, to job positions. So for instance, a lot of these, you know, the way re companies recruit uh, people is typically through, you know, uh, four-year degree programs. But I think, you know, we're really missing opportunities there because there are people who have, very obviously, have technical uh, ability and certainly programming type of, of skills, which is certainly what we would still require is mainly people with programming skills. But sometimes people just don't, aren't interested in, in doing a four-year degree or maybe aren't, it isn't possible for them to do a four-year degree. So I think one of the challenges is to see how, you know, to identify people who are interested who might necessarily go on to do a four-year degree, how, how they can um, uh, you know, get into this type of, of, of work. And I think one of the, one of the, one of the ways would be to take um, you know, short courses, which could lead to a, a qualification in level five or six. So for instance, we've taken on recently out in, in IBM Software Lab, a particular new section called Operations, which is supporting, uh, so, um, it, it's a support role but we've taken on a number of people from the FIT program, and, and I think there were of, nine, of 10 people that were on that program, nine of them have got positions, and they would be at, at I suppose, the level five or six. So then I think once people get an opportunity, once they get some experience, they get some kind of um, idea of, of, of what they like and, and, and what, what they're good at, and then the companies can, you know, once they get into the roles, they can, you know, it's relatively easy to get people into it to do further education and training. But I think that's, um, you know, that's got to be one way of, of you know, um, getting people interested in, in working in the industry who aren't going to necessarily go on to do a, a four-year degree. So um, also, uh, if you look at the top line there, level six and seven, there, the, um, the number of, of graduates there per year in terms of requirements is, according to this report, is estimated to be about 500 a year. But there's, overall, there's a big increase our big demand for, for each of these areas in computer science compared to other areas such as engineering. Um, so just to make a point in terms of the positions for levels um, six and seven. So in, in addition to computer science and ICT, there's also what's called you know, the, the user sectors. So these are people who would be, have to have a certain amount of technical you know, knowledge and uh, they work on, on, on systems in support of business functions. 
So uh, again, this is a good way, I think, of getting in into the industry where you, you get in at this level and then you can advance, um, you know, um, uh, as, uh, you know, you can advance in time. Um, <clears throat> so what, one of my colleagues, uh, Jim Spohr in, in IBM, for many years has been talking about this, this need for T-shaped people. So basically it means that you have an expertise in one particular discipline, uh, one particular area of, of technical expertise but that you, you get experience and knowledge across different, you know, different systems, different um, business areas, uh, and just different technical areas, so that you have the, um, the broad sort of experience, but expertise in, in one particular area. And <clears throat> in, IT lends itself to that uh, because it means that you can move from one, one section to another and, and, and gather more and more ex uh, uh, experience. Uh, this is taken from uh, I IBEC um, a report, and it's, it's, I think it's interesting in terms, it shows future work skills up to the year 2020, and it, in the main colors, uh, circles there, talks about the big, you know, uh, d drivers, as, as I mentioned, uh, in terms of smart systems and, and um, you know, high performance computing and, and all the rest of it. And then it talks about the particular skills that are needed, so in addition to your, your skills and in, in qualifications in, in computer science. It talks about areas like design, for instance, and uh, uh, new media, and, uh, uh, and so on. So that, again, it just is getting across the idea that you need to have a range of, of other skills apart from specific um, technical expertise. Um, and this chart here, again, in, in a recent re IDC report shows that the, the demand for people with ICT skills is now um, much, is, is, is much greater across the organization as opposed to within specific areas of, of IT. So as, as um, I mentioned before, and, and Evan did as well, it it's really pr is proliferating across um, organizations. <clears throat> um, so I just wanted to mention uh, one, one of the programs that we're involved in with the uh, HEA, and that's a STEM internship program. This is a, a program for graduates who've completed uh, a degree in computer science, um, but they're not quite sure what area of, that they, they want to get into. And to help them get into more job relevant, uh, or to develop more job relevant skills, there's an internship program to, uh, work, uh, over nine months, a uh, pilot program starting next March where um, we're going to work in, in four distinct areas, computer science, but also process transformation, which is around manufacturing technology, green technologies, and, and IT and business. So there's quite an overlap between each of those, those four areas. It, it, it's not just about um, IT, it also includes engineering, business languages, and so on. But the idea is that these are the four areas of, I've been identified with the, the greatest need, so, and the, uh, and, um, the, the, the objective is to give people experience in nine months, and after the nine months, they get accreditation for this towards a master's program and should have a better chance of getting a, a position. This would be more designed for the um, people with mid-level qualifications as opposed to people who would be getting, who would be in the top 20% or whatever. And, and I should point out, all, all of uh, the learning is, is on the job, so it's, it's all about the idea of, of lear learning by doing. Um, <clears throat> so, it, within Ireland and the EU, there's many, many um, uh, initiatives now to, to uh, you know, I suppose, meet this challenge of, of, of the requirements for technical skills. So, in a report, and uh, this is taken from IBEC, uh, the blue line across shows all the various themes that I mentioned, and then uh, there are several initiatives uh, under the heading of employment initiatives. Uh, I think I heard one mention uh, youth reach, youth opportunities initiative, and so on. Um, there's education and learning and then e-skills programs. So there, um, there isn't any one single uh, you know, solution or magic bullet. It really is a combination of initiatives. Um, and I think one of the, one of the things that uh, there's been a call for is greater, greater integration and uh, I suppose uh, coordination of all these dis different initiatives um, so that pe people are a better awareness of, of, of what's going on and what opportunities there are. And I think um, you know, that's, that really, you know, means that there's a need for, for you know, education, uh, organizations, industry, and government bodies to, to work together because there are, you know, huge opportunities. 
so final um, slide, I just want to uh, just kind of summarize. So uh, this is a slide that that's, I've taken from my own uh, company in terms of the idea of smarter cities. So um, these are the trends that, that represent the trends that have been taking place over the last, last number of years. So you have an um, uh, increasing number of mobile devices which have data or information embedded in them uh, with the development of broadband um, availability and the, the lower cost. It's more economical now to connect all these devices. And then I suppose the, the challenge then for, for people uh, is, is how to um, uh, analyze this data and use it to, to provide solutions in terms of you know, better healthcare and, and transportation and so on. So for instance, uh, Dublin City Council has, uh, has an open data uh, uh, policy um, and they've been working with a number of companies, including our own, and to analyze data which has resulted in uh, you know, programs like the Dublin pro program and better infrastructure for transport and so on. So, um, so that's a quick uh, kind of a run through of, of the trends and I uh, hope it prompts some discussion for you now. Thanks very much. Uh.